Hi, I'm Dean Rankin, Simpsons comic artist, and you're listening to my interview with Elaine Goodman on gogoodman.com.au. Where did your passion for illustration come from? I um, watched way too much TV as a kid, and I watched lots of cartoons. I think they kind of influenced me and influenced my style. But also I was kind of a sort of a quiet and shy kid, a little bit socially awkward, and I think I found sort of like my, uh, how I communicated was through drawing. It was something that um, I felt like I was good at and it was kind of, it was sort of my talent and what I did. It was sort of like a source of identity almost. What cartoons did you watch and get inspiration from? Oh, uh, yeah, look, um, I was a sort of child of the 70s, so we had like a lot of, um, uh, lots of sort of Hanna-Barbera kind of things. I watched uh, Scooby-Doo, Bat Fink, um, all kinds of stuff. Pretty much anything that was um, animated um, I watched. Do you remember the first first ever cartoon character you drew? No. No? no I don't. No. It's, um, um, yeah, no, it's too hard for me to, to remember. Look, what happened, well, I think it might have been in kinder and I drew, I, I think it was a possum and Maybe the teacher told me it was good or someone like gave me some praise for it. And I remember, and look, it was probably horrible, but I remember thinking, oh, this is, this is what I'm good at, so I should keep doing this. You know, it's sort of the uh, uh, sort of low self-esteem and the power of someone saying that this was good. Um, but So I just drew a lot. Um, I would just draw every day. And in some ways, it just never really stopped. Did you go on to study art at university? I did a TAFE course, an uh, um, art design course in eighty nine ninety. That was two years. And that was good. Um, but it was kind of like pre-computers. So any kind of design skills that I got out of it, um, I, so I can't really do anything with it in some ways. Um, so, but and look, it wasn't a bad course that I did, um, but it was mainly to um, sort of try different mediums and try different kinds of things. Um, I can't say it really helped me with my drawing specifically or doing comics specifically, um, but it was an okay course. So, when uh, you told me, I obviously met you at Comic Con a few weeks back, and you told me. Oh, and I also read about you, and you've got your illustrations in all different kinds of magazines. You started off getting your your uh, comics and different things in kids' magazines all around the world. What was what was the process in getting getting your material noticed? Out there, yeah. Um, I guess I, I don't know. I kind of started just drawing comics of and then submitting them to magazines, basically. I, um, right out of art school, I started doing stuff for, I'm not sure if they're even around anymore, they were sort of challenge, called Challenge and Pursuit magazines. You could get them at schools. Um, so I did those for a while, and then I started submitting stuff to um, kids' magazines like K-Zone and Mania magazines. Um, I remember K-Zone. Those, you know, those kind of ones that you buy at yeah. the supermarket? Yeah, like, like Disney Adventures and all kinds yeah, of that. Yeah, those kind of things, yeah. So yeah. I was doing those for a little while too. And then, um, uh, you know, I'm not sure if I'm skipping ahead, but what happened is that um, that, worked, that work kind of dried up for me. So I went to uh, the, like the local supermarket and to see what was around, and I picked up a Simpsons comic. And... Um, Thinking, and I've always had like a sort of cartoony style, so there's only sort of so certain styles I can do. But looking at Simpsons, I thought, you know, I could just about do that. And then I started submitting work to them, and um, so that's how I um, started to work for the Simpsons. So you you mentioned a point earlier that's really interesting. How has how have comic creations changed now that uh, computers are involved? Whereas 20, 30 years ago, there were no computers. Is it yeah. easier or harder? I mean, you still obviously have to use pencils to, to draw your ideas and sketch them up and then put them onto computers, but yeah. is, does that make the process easier or harder? Well, yeah, yeah absolutely. I, 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 um, I've sort of tried to embrace that technology, and I find it um, a lot easier. I, uh, how I, my process is I pencil, um, then I'll scan that into the computer and make changes if necessary, and then I'll ink and colour it. 
um, uh, onto the computer in Photoshop. And I've got one of those Cintiqs, like it's a, it's a screen that I draw uh, on directly. Oh, yeah, like, then... like we used to have, like, well, I used to have, a, like, a toy one of them, then you used to pull the thingy across and you used to rub out, kind of like an updated version of that. Yeah, when someone's there, <laughs> but you have, like, a little pen tool, so you kind of, it's like, it's not the same feel as doing it on paper, but it's kind of like maybe like on a window for instance like you know there is a little bit of a gap between you and the image but once you get used to it it's just fantastic because like um, uh, I've never been a big fan of inking and you can if you're doing it it's like you by hand you can it's easy to screw up a line but on the computer as well if you, you just do it and if it doesn't if it's not how you like it you can just kind of control exit like delete it and then do it again and sometimes I find myself I might do a line five times until I get uh, have the feel that how or what from it. So it's um, it's been really great. And then you can just email it all around, so which is a hell of a lot easier. So the stuff I do for Bongo Comics, um, I upload it to like an FTP account once I'm finished with it, so they can look at it straight away. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's the technology has been fantastic for comics. And you mentioned you've you got your big break with Bongo Comics and The Simpsons. I, I'd imagine that that would be like the peak of all comics that you could work for. Can you explain how you went from yeah, as you said, looking at Simpsons comics in a supermarket to working working for Bongo Comics and yeah, yeah, and you're yeah, absolutely right. It. I think it's such a it was such a huge thing for me again because of my style. You know, it's not like I'm not going to be drawing Spider Man or Superman. I just don't draw like that. It's a very cartoony kind of style. So I, I think you're right. Basically, I think the Simpsons is basically the almost the, 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 the pinnacle thing. And so what happened was, um, after looking at this comic, I thought, okay, I'm going to start submitting some pages. So it wasn't just drawings about Simpson. I was drawing, making stories up, and sending them in. And there was there's a submissions email address so you can send submissions in. So I think it was maybe about the third one I sent in that they got back to me and said, oh, they were looking at using them. And they ended up using all the ones that I sent through. And it's funny, looking back now at those early comics, they're pretty horrible, I have to say. But I think they saw something in them um, that, that they must have liked. So, um, and I've had pretty kind of, you know, reasonably regular work with them since. And it's been nice to, um, I guess, kind of hone my skills in drawing in that style. Because it's not my it's not my style, I'm kind of aping somebody else's style. It's taken a while for me to um, get in a place that I feel comfortable, like Bart looks like Bart or Homer looks like Homer, for instance. And it's interesting, particularly the main characters, when they're off, you know they're off, because I think they're such well-known sort of images. So it's uh, it's kind of glaring if they don't look right. How long ago did you officially start working for Bongo? I, look, I can't remember. I say about, like, a couple of years, three years, but, yeah, I'm not sure. I think it was 2011, 2012, or something like that. So were you, were you always interested in writing as well? It's funny, look, writing has been really interesting for me. That it hasn't been... Uh, I've always just kind of written my own comics um, more out of necessity than anything else because, like, a lot of these, particularly all those magazines and stuff that I mentioned earlier, they don't pay very well. And if you're kind of trying to get a writer on board as well, um, you have to you sort of cut, you know, you, your income gets cut in half, basically. So, um, so yeah, I've always written it, but of late I've been writing comics and I'm working on something with somebody else at the moment that I'm, I'm just the writer, and it's been really satisfying. It's been kind of um, um, opened up a whole new world for me, and it also means I can tackle some uh, subjects a little bit more serious than I would have if I was illustrating them. And because, obviously, you said the comic The Simpsons is created and it's created by somebody else and it's your interpretation of it yeah. is it hard to keep the characters personalities when you're writing the stories because you obviously can't use each of their catchphrases too often otherwise you're overusing them yeah, so how do you yeah, kind of draw but, the line yeah yeah i'm not sure. look in some ways i'm not sure it's always a bit of a a, a hit and miss kind of thing um i i do try to avoid the catchphrases but i 
what's nice about doing something like that's such a well-known um, sort of franchise is, say, if I'm writing a story that has, has Millhouse in it, when I say Millhouse, we all kind of know what he sounds like. You know, he's, he's such a well-defined character. And in some ways, you almost know what he's going to do in any given situation because he's such a well-known character. So that's kind of fun to do. Um, so I'm not sure if I really answered your question. It, like, but I, it's a little bit hit and miss. I, I'm doing my best. Have you ever had one sent back with the with Matt Groening say that, no, this isn't quite Millhouse, can you kind of make it a bit more like this? Yeah, what happens is they, so they'll contact me and they'll say, oh, look, we've got this new comic out. Um, it might be, a, say, they must be working on maybe, I think it's a Batman one-shot coming up. So they'll send, they'll say, oh, can we get a couple of pages? So I will send, I think the last bunch I sent maybe four or five stories off and they chose one out of those. And at that point, there wasn't really much to, to alter. Um, Bonko are a, are a great company to work for, for I have to say. They're, um, um, once, they've never sort of sent anything back and said to redo it. Um, it's only at maybe the story change. A couple of times I said, oh, um, can you change the ending slightly or something like that? And, and that's all. Um, yeah, they're, they're a real joy to work for. So once you've written a story, what's the process in getting it published? Obviously, you have to draw it and get it approved by Matt Groening. How long does this kind of process take, and what else is there um, to do? So, look, so, I, um, so I don't really have any sort of direct contact with Matt Groening at all. I do um, uh, I have a, um, a, an art director, and he'll contact me. So he'll say, oh, we want some ideas. Because I guess... And because I'm mainly, I still see myself more of an, as an artist than a, a strictly a writer. When I submit ideas, they're basically rough comics. Okay, so they're like, so you could just read them as a comic that I've just drawn up on photocopy paper and scanned them in. So, um, so they know exactly what they're getting. And if it's a gag that's particularly like an, an image, then I don't have to explain it because I've just sort of drawn it as a rough. So then they'll um, they'll have a think about it, I guess, and it might be a couple of days before they get back to me and say, look, yeah, we'll go for this story here about Mr. Burns and the bear in his office, for instance. Okay. So then I'll um, then I'll take my um, roughs and use those as a guide to draw up, so pull up the page. I just pencil on photocopy paper. I don't actually pencil onto a, um, uh, you know, a, sort of a, a proper um, comic book page as such. So I'll just I'll just do it on photocopy paper and then scan it into the computer, put them where I want, make the images larger or smaller, or change the heads around or whatever I need to do to make it look more like The Simpsons. Then, like I said, then I'll ink and colour the comic and load it up to the FTP account and um, there's a, a letterer named Nancy Berrien who works in-house and she does all the lettering. So I'm sure she'll letter it and then um, I get to see the comic once it's been printed. When you ink it, is that all on the computer or all techno digital. technologically? Yeah, yeah, digital. digital. Yep. yeah so, for me, so the pages don't really exist in the real world. It's not like I have sort of Simpsons pages floating around. Um, they're really on the computer and that's all. Um, I find that it's really um, uh, makes things faster to do it just digitally and it looks better when I just do it digitally as well. What about drawing the characters and all their uh, different facial expressions? You said this took a while for you to get used to. How long did it take you to, for oh, you to feel look, comfortable? I still think I'm in the process of, of learning it now. The... Um, I have this sort of a, there's a How to Draw a Simpsons handbook. Oh, that's um, cool. It's, have you seen that one? No, I haven't. Yeah, it's like, it's a, it's a quite, there's a thin one, there's this really thick one as well, and that's got um, sort of the main characters and a few of the How to Draw the other characters. Um, so I use that often as a guide as, as well, and if the character that I have to draw isn't in that book, oh, what's great about Simpsons is there's such a strong fan base that... Um, I can just look on the internet and there will be, um, you know, sort of images of, of the characters, in, in, you know, and that I can use it as a guide. 
So, you know, so, yeah. So I'm still in, the, still in the process of learning how to do it, really. Who is your favourite and least char- least and least favourite character to draw and why? Yeah, so I'll, I'll start with the least. I, I think this, uh, the, the, the ones I, I struggle with the most are the main characters um, because I think they're so well known and because, also because their eyes are together. And if you, mess, <laughs> if you mess their eyes up, like one's bigger than the other, it looks really odd. You know, um, uh, and someone like like Lisa or Maggie, they're all triangles and they're horrible to draw. I love them. I love the characters, but to actually draw them, um, I, I find to be particularly tricky. Um, also, I'm not great with female characters. Um, just when I ink it, they always look a little bit locky or something. But um, so yeah, so yeah, I'll go. So like Maggie and Lisa would be the the hardest ones I, I struggle with the most. The ones I like to draw the most are the um, the sort I guess the more the, the minority kind of characters when their eyes aren't connected together. The ones like I like drawing Snake or Sojo Bob or um, and I love drawing Millhouse. He's one of my favourite characters. Well, um, Snake could be hard because he has the tattoos on his arms, and I guess Millhouse would be easy because half of his face is his nose. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> right. But he's, it's a funny kind of nose too. I, I can often make it look too pointy when it's actually quite round at, at the top. And there's all these little things that um, I have these sort of uh, battles with when trying to draw them. But, um, yeah, like I said, I think I'm getting a little bit better at it over time. Yeah, I used to collect uh, Simpsons comics growing up. There weren't a lot that had Snake in them. Yeah, it's interesting. They, they kind of, they do tend to aim, I think, at a younger audience as well. So maybe that's why he hasn't been, isn't in them, you know, a lot. But I, I try to put him in what I can if there's a if there's a story that warrants it. So I think I've drawn him. I think maybe like in three of the stories or something like that. Not as the main character, but kind of floating around in the background. What Simpsons episode do you wish you would have got to first to be able to turn it into a comic before it became an episode? Uh, My absolute favourite episode is when Lisa becomes a vegetarian. (laughs) With Paul McCartney. Yeah, with Paul McCartney (laughs) and, you know, the pig flying through the air. (laughs) It's still good, it's still good. (laughs) Uh, You don't win friends with salad. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just, it's such a winner. Yeah, I love that episode, it's my favourite one. And as I said, I, I met you at Comic Con earlier, well, a few weeks ago. Do you do you attend a lot of conventions and do this kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. So at the conventions, you would have seen like so I draw people. I basically my shtick is that I draw people like they're a Simpsons character as a sketch, or I put their head in a jar like like they're from Futurama. Um, and I, I do a lot of them. So certainly I'm Melbourne based. So. Um, all the Melbourne ones, but um, if I get an opportunity to do some of the interstate ones, I'll do. And I've had the chance to go to New Zealand a couple of times for Armageddon, and um, that's been really good. I think I'm going to Sugar City Con in Mackay um, next month. So yeah, look, I do them a fair bit if, if I have give, if given the opportunity. They're um, they're a little bit exhausting because I draw all day, um, so I don't think people will see me at my best. But I do, um, I do love to do it. It's a very different experience. Like drawing at home by yourself is uh, it's very different than uh, experience in drawing at a convention in front of somebody and you know with the crowds and all that kind of stuff. But it's it's nice. It's a nice different. And you you mentioned Futurama. Do you do a lot of Futurama? And do you, uh, do you prefer but, drawing those characters to The Simpsons? No, I do, I do bugger all um, Futurama. I would love to do more. But um, they don't tend, to, mainly the stuff I do are backup stories, and they don't tend to use a lot of backup stories. Um, so, I can't, look, I would like to, I don't know the, I have watched pretty much all the series, but I don't feel as connected, or I don't know them, all the characters quite as well, maybe. Um, so, you know, it'd be hard for me to say pick a, my favourite Futurama episode, for instance. Um, what worries me most about drawing Futurama, and I would love to get a chance to do more, though, is the backgrounds, because they're much more complicated. Because you look at the city, for instance, in Futurama, and it's really complicated. And I can't draw a straight line to save myself. So um, <laughs> that, uh, that sort of is uh, what worries me the most about it. But I would love to do more of them. 
Now, I, I talked to a few of the DC comic artists about this as well, and I want to get your opinion. What does Matt Groening, obviously Matt Groening created The Simpsons, and it would be the same for the DC comics because DC is such a big company. What does Matt Groening, does Matt Groening support you going out and doing cons and using The Simpsons characters to make, to, I guess, to make a little bit of ex- extra money off, off the brand? Look, I have no idea, to be honest. I'm not sure where I stand with it. What I do try to avoid as much as possible is drawing the Simpsons characters. Um, but I do tend to... Um, that's why I do more Simpsons... It's really just aping a style as opposed to taking characters and drawing them. So, yeah, I don't know what his stand would be. What did the, uh, can I ask, what did the DC character, the, the, the DC people say? They said because DC is such a big brand and they make so many millions and millions of dollars and the comic artists don't get paid a great mm. deal that they don't mind that they mm. go out to, the, to all the cons and make money off, off the brand because it's, it's such a small percentage oh, in, yeah, compared exactly. to the, yeah. how big DC actually is. Yeah, look, I would like to think that that uh, sort of Bongo would feel the, the same way, and I, um, they certainly have, haven't asked me to stop. If they if they wanted me, to, if they if they did ask me, I would. Uh, but it's um, it, it is nice because um, comic artists don't get paid really well. Not in the big scheme of things. Not you know um, when looking about how much work you actually put into it. So it's nice to have the conventions to um, add to that. What what are, what are some of the most popular questions you get asked by by Simpsons lovers at conventions? Yeah, yeah, I think that kind of those ones you are, you know, uh, oh, how did I start doing it? What is my favourite episode? Who's my favourite character to draw? Those are the kind of things that, that come up most. Um, there was a weird question I've been asked a couple of times about um, characters in the backgrounds not having eyebrows, and twice I've been. It must be some, like, I don't know, like an urban legend or something like that about characters in the, the background of Simpsons not having eyebrows, but I can't say, you know, I can't confirm or deny it. Um, if I have a background character, um, if they have eyebrows, I'll put them in. I haven't, actually haven't noticed a lot of the yeah, eyebrows on characters. I don't know, I don't know, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, you told me at, at uh, Comic-Con that you, you met Yardley Smith, who obviously yeah. voices Lisa Simpson. Was it weird putting a human face to such an icon- iconic character? Yes, yeah. And you can say, like, just in her voice, just normally, she kind of sounds a bit like Lisa Simpson. I know she has to put the voice on, um, but you can just, like, hear a, a hint of it. It's a really... It's a strange phenomenon, I think. It's interesting, um... You go, oh, okay. It just even just like these kind of characters. I think they're so well known. I think the, I think it's starting like the 26th year. It's been going, and you go. In some ways, I can't quite believe Homer Simpson isn't a real character. Isn't a real being. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, he's just drawings with with you know with someone putting um, words in his mouth, and yeah, it's uh, you know it's it's, a, it's a hard to grasp. Well, he he should be over sixty by now, but he hasn't changed a bit. He hasn't changed a bit. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's interesting, and it? yeah, it's such. I, it, it is a real pleasure to be able to work in any way associated with that show because I think it is, uh, it's iconic, it's um, subversive, and uh, you know, it's you know, all the quotes. You know, I don't know about you, but you know, I, you know, you can have like full conversations just with Simpsons quotes. <laughs> oh yeah, I do believe me, I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, did you learn anything from talking to Yardley that has helped you portray characters better in your drawings? Not really. We really thought she was kind of talking about um, uh, re- re- that they would they, so they all record together as a group. I thought that was really interesting. Um, she was kind of surprised to learn that um, that someone from Australia was working on the comic as well because it's kind of you know. I think most people think it's purely a sort of US-based entity. Um, that being said, I, I think I am the, I'm certainly the only one in Australia who's worked on Simpsons comics. I think I'm the only one in the Southern Hemisphere. But um, so, but um, yeah. So look, we didn't really talk comics as such. We we're just sort of having lunch um, while we we're at a con together, and it was yeah, it was really nice. So this interview is basically an Australian exclusive. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I don't know about that, but yeah. <laughs> Have you ever uh, proposed creating your own character for the Simpsons comics? Mm, no, I haven't, but I have drawn... Um, I, I had kind of just drawn some, like, sort of 
there's all background kids in a uh, in one of the um, in one of the stories I did, and um, the art director got back to me and asked me to do specific only Simpsons characters. So, and I wonder if that's kind of related to it. And you know that those only want their own characters portrayed. So yeah, no, I, I haven't sort of thought to, you know, really submit. Okay, well, this, you know, to make up a character, but it'd be nice, wouldn't it? And yeah, it would be. And um, when when the Simpsons show finishes up, it doesn't look like finishing anytime soon. But when it does, have you ever thought about whether that they'll keep the comic series going? Yeah, look, I have thought about that, and I wonder. I don't know what would like you know. I know something like like Archie comics, for instance, have gone on forever, and I think people would still like to have, you know, Simpsons going in a, you know, in some kind of way. Um, but yeah, like, look, I have thought about it. Yeah, I don't know. And obviously, you're you're very passionate about drawing, creating comics. What other kind of stuff have you done? And is this is this yeah your long term career career? I guess option. Do you do you yeah, enjoy it yeah. so much that you can keep doing it? It's the kind of thing that wouldn't be too strenuous that you could keep doing into your seventies or eighties. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. It is, when you say not strenuous, I would argue in some ways it, it does take a lot of concentration, um, and you do kind of do long hours, particularly if you have a tight deadline, and it does mess with your eyes a little bit. So I know there was a I, I saw a, a, an article from a. I think he was a Donald Duck kind of comic artist relatively recently, and, and he's had to stop doing it just because of the detail that he would put into his art. But it, it is something like drawing comics isn't... It's Yes, it's a career, though um, financially it's, it's kind of lousy for me, but it's more like... It's just like what I am in some ways. I, I just can't imagine ever not wanting to draw or... I mean, you have your days, but just in generally speaking, you know, this is it's really important to me. This is my, how I express myself. It's, it's a passion. It's like, it's it's passion. like my, but, me yeah, and interviewing people. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> this is kind of, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like what I am more than, than what I do in some ways. Um, yeah, did I answer that question, all of it? Or, yeah. So, yeah, it's certainly, yeah, it's, so what, I'm what not other... stopping any, basically, I'm not stopping any time soon. So what, what other comics have, have you done that, that you're, you're proud to plug? Yeah, so um, so I've done stuff for um, Australian Mad Magazine. I've worked for um, uh, the Beano and the Dandy in in, um, in the UK. I do some illustration work occasionally, like I'm doing some stuff for Penguin Books at the moment. And my other thing is I have a creator-owned uh, comic called Itty Bitty Bunnies in Rainbow Pixie Candyland. And wow. uh, I don't know if you saw that, but that's about these sort of naked drug-using bunny rabbits. Um, so it's very much for very much for grown ups, um, but they're um, they're a lot of fun to do. It's like it's kind of a comic that you can you know all your sort of deranged psyche you can kind of let out on the page. So they're pretty nuts. Is that is that sold in news agents everywhere? No, not news agents. <laughs> it's comic book shops. So okay. you know, if anyone's listening, you're interested in itty bitty bunnies and rainbow pixie candy land, you can pre-order it at your uh, comic book shop. Okay, and where can people find you? Your website, obviously Twitter. What? Uh, yeah, so I'm on Facebook the most. Um, so Dean Bishmar Rankin on Facebook. Um, I'm on Twitter, but I hardly use it, and I'm on DeviantArt as well. Cool. Cool. All right, awesome. Thank you very much for talking to me today. It's, it's been a pleasure, and it's really good discussing a cartoon that's been around well before I was born. <laughs> It's amazing, yeah. Well, thanks a lot. It was nice chatting.